Josh's chair. I learned not to don't change Josh's chair because he'll notice. He'll be the first one to notice. Hey, this chair's this chair's been moved. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Have you ever noticed that Josh is a very detail-oriented young man? Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. He is detail-oriented. Well, he's on the uh, our board when down he, there. When is he, he gets when he gets something, he reads through it. Oh my God. He'll send you a dissertation on it in about two hours. <laughs> it's great. He's in there, right? Yep. Yeah, I know with those dealing with the water rate increase. He, oh, yeah. I mean, we didn't talk. We yeah. didn't talk about it, but I know he really went through all the he information. He did. He went through it all. Good morning, everybody. We'll get started. I'm trying to figure out which mic. <laughs> Test, test. I don't know if you guys can hear me okay or not, but welcome to the Monday, May 1st uh, Board of Public Works and Safety Agenda. We are streaming live on City Mass and YouTube channel and recording it for archive purposes later. Welcome to May. And uh, clerk, will have a roll call, please. Absolutely. Carlo? Here. Courtney? Here. Eaglin? Here. Thank you. Board, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes from April 17th? If so, we'll um, accept a motion to approve those, please. I'll make a motion we approve the amends as printed. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Well, I understand that uh, Mr. Fine can't be here today, so we'll leave. Uh, hmm? Oh, darn, I keep skipping over claims. Uh, we'll leave the unfinished business uh, on the table and we'll move on to claims. Mayor had an opportunity to review the claims. With that, I'll make a motion that the claims be approved and submitted. I second David's motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. That. Now moving into new business. Uh, Brian, I think the first two or three things are under your purview and I'll add the um, road transfer agreement for Ferry Street to the list, and okay. maybe you want to do that first, or you want me to do my stuff first? Let's. Well, I'm going to incorporate you into the uh, road transfer agreement. So let's start with the lease agreement and the uh, SRF water tower change order. Okay. The first uh, item I have is the lease agreement with CMN RUS Inc. between the City of Madison Water Department, and it's more or less MetroNet is who that is. Uh, I won't go through the whole thing. I'll give you a synopsis. Uh, it, it's an agreement, a uh, lease agreement for an initial two-year term at the rate of $1,000 per month. It gives Metronet permission to install and operate an antenna or antennas on our south water tower located at 2294 Wilson Avenue. Uh, the agreement will automatically renew for successive one-year terms unless either party gives notice of intent to terminate the agreement at least 180 days before the expiration of the then current term. Uh, in the past, uh, both uh, Metronet and SCI Communications have used our tower, but we have never charged them. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the first time we're going to be charging someone for the use and, of the tower. And uh, is SCI also using the tower? No. They, they In the past, we didn't just let them use it for free. They provided services for us. Uh, back then, they helped us monitor with our SCADA, okay. but uh, they no longer do that. So. Um, they are no longer on the tower either. They quit servicing our area, okay. SCI Communications did. And, Brian, the property that's described as adjacent property, is that just kind of the footprint around Correct. the water They're, tower so they can have the access to it? We just the little there, yes. And, I, and I've already talked to the people working on the towers. They, they, they're the tower, the antenna stuff they can work around. So when they were rehabbing those towers also. And you said this is a two-year agreement? Yes. It's, it's in the long, I, I summed it up, but it's in the long three-page mm -hmm. document. Okay. We've been, Joe and the mayor, we've been looking at it for almost a year now. Yeah. So yeah. We're, I'm, I'm, I think we're I ready. like this version of the lease and uh, happy to see that we're going to create some revenue off of the uh, the tower there. Yeah. But, uh, and then I just need the approval and the, the mayor's signature. And now, now this is something, I, I'm sure that that area is locked by the city. Do they contact yes. you if they need to do maintenance? And no, generally we, we they have a key also. Okay, have Just key like also. Duke and okay. all other utilities, we kind of okay. put several locks on there so one person can get in. Okay. We do that at several locations for other utilities because they have to have access. And if they need it at 2 in the morning, they don't want to be trying to track us down. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
I had a question for Joe. On page three of the lease, under the insurance, number 19, it references uh, <clears throat> workers' compensation insurance, and it, it says, uh, line two, as required by the state of Kentucky. My, I, I wonder what Kentucky has to do with this. Well, that's them. They're the tenant. That's their insurance, not our insurance. This is the tenant's insurance. That their employers, which would be very Kentucky employees. Even though their mailing address is Overland Park, Kansas. So. Yes, I can look and see, but that's that's what I assumed. I mean, it's it's their insurance too. It's not it ours. Doesn't really it, has, it doesn't yeah. make any difference to us because it's their employees, their workers. Right. So, we, right. We I I just didn't know if that should be clarified. Any comments or questions from anyone in the audience? I'll make a motion we approve the lease agreement. Uh, and Bill will look into on the other matter. But anyway, I'll make a motion authorize to, me to, sign. to uh, approve the agreement. And authorize the mayor to sign. And authorize the mayor to sign the agreement. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right, and the second item I have on mine is a, a Water Project Division B change order number one. Uh, it's a change directive. Uh, it is including, that's MW Coal Construction and their subcontractor is Simplify Industrial Coatings. Uh, the proposed change is contractual work, includes a credit for removal of tank level transducers installation at the Hilltop Elevated Storage Tank 1, Hilltop Ground Tank 1, and Hilltop Ground Tank 2 and the State Road 5662 elevated storage tanks. The work to be added to the project is a customized logo on the north side of the Hilltop elevated storage tank number one. This is gonna have a contract price of zero, so we're basically doing a trade. Net, net change order yeah, of net zero. net change order of zero. Okay. I'll move that we approve Division B, Division B work change directive number one. I second the mayor's motion. Any discussion? Comments or questions? Favorite, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Moving on. Uh, next on the agenda is the road transfer memorandum of agreement between Indiana Department of Transportation and City of Madison concerning the temporary transfer of Ferry Street in Jefferson County. Uh, this is part uh, and parcel to the work that's being done for drainage, uh, Highway 56 and Ferry Street, and in exchange for the investment Indot is making in that area to improve drainage, <clears throat> they've asked us, <clears throat> excuse me, to temporarily transfer Ferry Street so they'd have full control of the road until completion, which is estimated to be uh, August the 10th uh, or sooner. Yeah, currently the stormwater drainage is going through private property without Indot's permission. They're going to run the new storm drainage down Ferry Street and through corner of our property and the hotel property with easements with proper easements and then they will they were doing the work and then they'll turn the stormwater infrastructure outside of their right away over to us and we've already we've already okay. approved here yeah, payment water, of the our water line relocation yes down there yeah, okay. in, in, included not part of that but we have included a, a, we've done some agreements with them for our water line relocation uh, because it's in the right of way I make a motion we approve the road transfer with the uh, city for the transfer of Ferry Street. I'll second Carl's motion. Any additional discussion? Comments or questions? Have you none? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Board. 
Uh, now we'll move into uh, invite Tony Steinart here on a revolving loan modification. Uh, good uh, morning, um, board members. Today um, before you is a revolving loan uh, <coughs> modification and extension of term. <coughs> um, the business uh, has been a great um, uh, payer and repayment of the current seven-year note. Uh, there was some confusion with the repayment schedule as a part of the COVID extension and modification that was made. And uh, as a part of that, um, we've been working to modify that loan, which is about $15,000 to be repaid over the next two years uh, for that individual business. Um, the ordinance requires the Board of Public Works and Safety to approve that uh, loan extension and modification. Thank you, Tony. Tony and I have both worked on this. I think this original balance on this loan was around $75,000. Originally, it's, yes. And it's now, like I said, it's been uh, the seven year note's been paid down to 15. And with okay. the extension and the pausing of, of the COVID uh, modifications, there was some confusion <coughs> to that note. And this rectifies that. I make a motion we uh, approve the extension of the loan. Mayor to sign the documents. Yes. Sign the documents. Because yes. there will be a new loan document that Joe will prepare. Mm -hmm. I'll second Carl's motion. Any discussion? Comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Any other questions, Any Mayor? At this time? Okay, thank you. That's good. Now we'll move on to uh, several street closure requests, starting with. One of Madison's longest running and most premier events, Chautauqua. All right, this one is resolution number 18B-2023, <clears throat> resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, regarding a street closing for the 2023 Madison Chautauqua. Whereas there has been a request filed by the Madison Chautauqua for street closings for said group in connection with the Madison Chautauqua to be held from September 30th to October 1st, 2023. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the following streets shall be closed beginning at 8 a.m. Friday, September 29th, until 8 p.m. Sunday, October 23rd, or October 1st, 2023. Vine Street between Main Street and Vaughn Drive, Elm Street between Main Street and Vaughn Drive, Broadway between <coughs> 2nd Street and Vaughn Drive, 1st Street between Mill Street and Vine Street, 1st Street between Elm Street and Poplar Street, 2nd Street between Mill Street and Broadway Street, um, Vaughn Drive between Mill Street and, Sec and Jefferson Street. The parking spaces along Vaughn Drive between Mill Street and Plum Street shall be closed only for parking purposes for the Chautauqua. Vaughn Drive between West Street and Jefferson Street shall be closed only for exhibitor parking purposes and open to through traffic during the event. West Street between First Street and Vaughn Drive shall be closed only for exhibitor parking purposes and shall be open to through traffic during the event, Poplar Street between 1st Street and Vaughn Drive, and Central Avenue between 1st Street and Vaughn Drive. Parking spaces along the north edge of Bicentennial Park, reserved for exhibitors beginning Saturday, September 30th through Sunday, October 1st. Be resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that Mill Street between 1st Street and Vaughn Drive shall remain open for through traffic purposes and no parking during the aforementioned period of time and be it further resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that Broadway Street between 2nd Street and 1st Street shall be one way south and 1st Street between Broadway and Poplar Street shall be one way east during the aforementioned period of time and there shall be no parking on the corner of Broadway and 1st Street from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. on Thursday, September 29th, 2023, to allow for tent setup. And all streets shall be closed under the supervision and control under the Madison Stock with the time zone to for the year 2023. Good morning. I know you've already put a lot of thought and preparation into creating literally a masterpiece of event planning. <laughs> That's what it takes <laughs> because it's such a big event and everybody looks forward to it every year. Carrie, you want to tell us a little bit, is there anything unique about it this year uh, that's a little different? I know that we've already had several meetings uh, working out the event planning and the public safety aspects of it and even more discussions to happen as we progress toward, toward that. But 
share with us uh, how exciting the 2023 Chautauqua is going to be. Um, we're very excited this year. We pushed back one week um, so that we are still the weekend prior to St. James Art Festival in Louisville, Kentucky. A lot of our artists will do a circuit, so they come to Madison, then they go on south to Louisville. Um, but this also opens us up to have some additional artists because there's a festival in Carmel and I think one in Tennessee that coincides with ours typically. Mm -hmm. So we'll have an influx this year, hopefully, of some new artists. We already have um, 87 confirmed artists at this point, and we're shooting for 200. Um, the addition of the Crystal Beach completion of that building, um, we are going to discuss maybe using that for artist hospitality. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to see that. Um, from a logistics standpoint, we're going to have to shuffle some parking situations, but we've got that and we're working with Tony to figure out what will be open and closed and how we can fit everybody in. But in general, we're hoping for another great festival. Us too, and thanks for your patience on working through all the construction we have going on on the riverfront because there's yeah. quite a bit that's all overlapping. And then uh, hopefully the uh, <coughs> Hanging Rock Hill project will be completed by then and that'll be another avenue to get in and out of out of downtown uh, explain a little bit I guess about what we discussed on because I want to make sure it's clear here on Mill Street between first and Vaughn that's intended to be a through street and no blocking of parking because of uh, emergency ingress and egress of vehicles is that correct correct so we just need to make sure we're co cooper uh, you know communicating really well and I've already spoken to Chief Wallace about that too here he is back there and we just want to make sure we keep that road clear and only use it for through traffic or, you know, pick up and drop off at the at the Lantier yes. uh, event if someone's you know picking up and dropping something off or picking up supplies that they bought there. And we'll Board be clear with our security that we need to kind of help patrol that area mm -hmm. as well, so we can make sure that there's no one blocking traffic for more than a few minutes. Last year it got really narrow down through there. It's a narrow street, yeah. and even if you try to park on the side it's hard to get completely off the road and it's a two-way through traffic so mm -hmm. um, we have to make sure it stays clear mm -hmm. so if someone ignores your no parking sign are you going to be on because there are people parking right up against the no parking signs yeah last um, year. yeah we will explore towing vehicles it's always the last resort we don't like to tow vehicles if we don't have to but within the footprint we've we're going to put on all of our signage that's very clear this is closed for parking and if you violate it we're subject yeah. to being towed yep i think it just good communication will help go a long way and then the you know the weekend of just making sure that it doesn't start kind of creeps in yeah and uh we just got to make sure it stays clear because that's a really congested intersection particularly at at uh, mill street and vaughn it only takes one person to park and then it becomes a free-for-all that's a, so it the does. first car is the <clears throat> first right. one right there was parking on both sides of that street last year. Yeah. Yeah, it's dangerous because there's a lot of pedestrians and yes. they're cutting across the street and maybe yeah. not paying as much attention as they should. Mm -hmm. I, I look at it as a, as a volunteer firefighter. I don't think we could have got an apparatus down no. Mill Street at the dog park, that right. area, because it was so narrow with vehicles parked on both sides of the street. So. Mm -hmm. Many reasons to keep parking off of Mill Street. And I know that. I know this this issue came up several years ago uh, because I was in some discussions. Uh, back then, the uh, I believe the Chautauqua Committee had, had proposed closing Mill Street, mm -hmm. and we worked out a compromise, and uh, yeah, it was kept open. It's important for us, um, we need access to the lot that is south of the visitor center and then also um, off of Vaughn Drive in order for artists to get in and out. So for, to leave it open for through traffic would be great and ideal for us and for the winery so that they could have people dropping off and picking up if they need to. But to eliminate the parking, that's the main situation. And then if we have an officer that can patrol and make sure that no one's flying through there, That'll help um, make sure it's safe for everyone. It just takes cooperation between all sides. It does. Yes. Looking forward to the event. Uh, board, any other questions? Uh, 
I want to commend you on your event plan. Oh, thank you. Great. Talk about a thorough plan. That was uh, That's great. That's really the model of what we were striving <laughs> it, it for is. when we rolled out that, and we tried to make it easier by having, you know, you can do it online, but something as complicated and large of a footprint as you have uh, really did a good job of explaining where, every, where everything is at. Thank you. It was yeah. a good way to consolidate what we had plans here there and everywhere in different documents now we've got them all consolidated into one this is the what we reference so now, but I think moving forward we need to have serious discussions on Main Street traffic we did that on Friday and Chief and town. us are yeah. going to get together um, for another one so we can again as we've talked about managing the entire public safety, not just the footprint, but outside footprint impact uh, has placed a lot of focus on some things. And we, we, we need to really evaluate how we man the traffic flow the weekend, uh, particularly when people are coming in and leaving where you've got peak times of traffic. <coughs> Any other comments or questions? Anyone from the audience? I make a motion we approve resolution 18 b dash. Two zero two three. I'll second Carl's motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Appreciate it. The next one is 19B-2023, a resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, regarding a street closing on behalf of the Trinity United Methodist Church. Whereas there has been a request by Doug Walker on behalf of Trinity United Methodist Church for a street closing in order to perform repair work on the church's steeple. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the west lane of Broadway Street between Main Street and 3rd Street shall be closed from May 20th, 2023 through May 12th, 2023, between the hours of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., in order to allow for equipment to be made for repairs on Top the church the steeple. That street is closed, shall be under the supervision and control of the Trinity United Methodist Church. Good morning. <coughs> Tom, good morning. how are you, sir? Very good, except I'm standing here. What would you rather be doing, Tom? Uh, I'd rather golf. be on a golf course. Yeah, on a golf course. <laughs> uh, well, guess what? The golf there course is closed today. Oh, son of a gun. Yes. <laughs> the, the wind, is that, I saw this, where it peeled yeah, back up there. That's this something. is wind damage that uh, is on the kind of southeast mm -hmm. corner of the main steeple. Uh -huh. uh, requires a lift uh, to get up that high, yeah. which requires us to ask for the street closure so we can keep the lift. We are anticipating at maybe a day, depending upon the amount of damage that we find. Uh, the other two days are a precautionary request simply because if the wind comes up one day, we can't get up there because of the restrictions from OSHA. Mm -hmm. can, Tom, can you clarify the dates? Because May, I'm not. May 10th. May 10th. To May 12th. Oh, not the 20th. Right? Oh. Sorry, okay, that was, it was the typo in here. May 10th to May 12th. That's yeah, so Wednesday through Friday. Wednesday through Friday. So yeah. we're not covering a Saturday, and it's all weekdays. Okay, good. Thank you for that clarification. Will the street be opened after 5 o'clock? Yes. So it'll just be during, just during basically working hours? For safety purposes. And if you get a day like the day where it is windy, you probably open the street that day if you can't perform. Oh, if, if we can't get use the crane that day, mm -hmm. the street won't be closed. Okay. 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 We'll amend, we'll amend the draft here to make sure we have the correct date. I'll make a motion we approve resolution 19B2023 uh, for this uh, temporary street closure for work to be done at Trinity Uni United Methodist Church May 10th to 12th. Any questions, comments, comments, questions from the audience? In, in Sir, Florida. yep. And who are you? Well, I th he's already got 10, 11, three days. Do you need more time, Tom? It's a good question. No, I do not anticipate needing more time. Okay. Uh, if you do, call the office. And we'll work with you. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Shelby. Thank Any other additional comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. 
All right, the next is <coughs> Resolution 20B-2023, a resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, regarding street closing for the Juneteenth 5K Fun Run Walk. Whereas there's been a request by, filed by Sue Liverts on behalf of the Friends of Lanier Mansion for street closings for said group in connection with their Juneteenth 5K Fun Run Walk to be held on Saturday, June 17, 2023. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the following streets shall be closed from 7.45 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Saturday, June 17, 2023. Broadway Street from Presbyterian Avenue to 5th Street, Presbyterian Avenue from Vine Street to the west side of the entrance of Trilogy, 5th Street from the east side of KDH Medical Office entrance to Springdale Cemetery, 6th Street from West Street to 5th Street, Elm Street from Presbyterian Avenue to 5th Street, Vine Street from Presbyterian Avenue to 4th Street, and 4th Street from Vine Street to Elm Street. Be it further resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that said streets as closed shall be in the supervision and control of the Friends of Lin Lanier Mansion, as noted above for the times. Good morning, Sue. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Tell us a little bit about this. This will be a new event. Right. It's it. a new <clears> event. <throat> uh, Juneteenth is now. It's a combination of June and 19 for Juneteenth uh, commemorating uh, emancipation of slaves mm -hmm. uh, that did not know that they were freed in Texas, and I'm sure you all already know that. Uh, it's a three-day weekend. On Saturday, we'll start with the 5K fun run walk uh, with those street closures. It's a loop uh, beginning on Broadway. In case of rain, we will go inside of the parking garage there at the hospital and make a loop from uh, Broadway up to Presbyterian, back down Elm, uh, down Fifth, twice, and it'll go past some of the uh, historic homes that may or may not be there, uh, Bill Smith, uh, the Humes House and various other places. It'll go down from there. It'll go down 6th Street, loop around there at um, Alcorn's office, and uh, then back. It's a 3.1 mile uh, run, and then on. We have insurance through um, Accord, Assured Partners. Uh, then on Saturday, on Sunday, uh, there'll be a picnic at the Lanier uh, Lawn, uh, music, food, uh, recitals, and that kind of thing. And then on Monday, there's a movie at uh, the Ohio Theater. It's a documentary on Juneteenth with a discussion afterwards. Hmm. Good. It's going to be a great weekend, and I've already got my registration form for the 5K. Good. Do you? <laughs> well, I'm getting too old to run. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. I'll be there at the finish line, but we are taking volunteers if anybody wants to volunteer. Well, we have another excellent runner in the audience, Nicholas Schaefer. Here's another 5K for you for your <laughs> training for the uh, Firecracker 10K. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, a great thing to bring. Uh, it's you know, beyond the historical uh, significance of it. It's also a great time to bring people together mm -hmm. at a fantastic location. Gaines Park is under construction and people can see the progress uh, at that point in time too for Gaines Park, which is all part of recognizing our black history here in the city of Madison. I think so too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or do you have a fun any? weekend. That'll be a fun weekend. Uh -huh. Red pop, uh, red velvet uh, cookies, because that's one of the things with Juneteenth barbecue, um, because that's another picnic item for Juneteenth. There's lots of celebrating. Great. Yeah. Uh, Bordy, any comments or questions for Sue relative to this part of uh, Juneteenth? I used to have a committee to set the barricades up and all that. Right. Uh -huh. okay. uh -huh. So I got all that thing here. I don't know. Did I not put that on there? It's in our event plan. They didn't yeah. get it. They, we yeah. moved our event plan online. Oh, okay. And so we're still working out yeah. the mechanics of getting it from over there to over here, tech, okay. uh, candidly. But it's fine. And it won't be very many it. streets that close, actually. Right. Well, with that, I'll make a motion with approved resolution 20B-2023. I'll second Carl's motion. Thank you Any additional much. discussion? Anyone from the audience? 
Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? I love it when there's no questions. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with your event. Good luck with it. I look forward to it, Sue. <clears throat> Movies in the park. All right, next one is resolution number 21B-2023, a resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, uh, regarding parking space closings for a movie in the park. Whereas there's been requested by Tanya Burnett on behalf of the City of Madison for street closings for certain parking spaces in connection mm -hmm. with movies in the park to be held on May 26, 20, May 26, June 28th, July 21st, and August 25th, and September 29th, 2023. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the parking space is located between Central Avenue and West Street on the north side of Vaughn Drive shall be closed from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. on the following dates for the movies in the park. And those are the dates we read above. Uh, and the parking spaces between Central Avenue and West Street on the south side of West First Street shall be closed from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. on the following dates in 2023 for movies in the park, and that's June 28th and September 29th. The parking spaces as closed shall be under the supervision and control of the city of Madison, the time zone above the year 2023. Well, Tanya, introduce yourself to the world. My name is Tanya Burnett, and I've taken a position in the Parks Department and will be overseeing events. You were looking for Hannah. I you? was, yeah. I was like, <laughs> where's Hannah? Um, so we went through a... Uh, a bit of a, a polling process to determine the movie. So there was what, five movies, four yes. movies? Five. Five movies. And is it, what was the number one, do you recall the number one movie choice that was Top voted Gun. on by? Top Gun. Top Gun. Yeah. Top That's Gun we'll Maverick. The new one, yes. The new one, Top <coughs> Gun Maverick. So we'll kick that off with the May 26th. going to be exciting. I'm disappointed the American Graffiti didn't make the list. No. That would be perfect for uh, <laughs> For the, the car show weekend, and I've already expressed my concern with your, your presence. With management. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that being said, I make a motion to approve resolution 21B-2023. I'll second Carl's motion. Um, I'll just say thank you to all of the uh, supporters <coughs> who are donating money for a lot of our summer series throughout the course of uh, – uh, this year with the Parks Department. It's uh, uh, between the fireworks and the parade, movies in the park, programming, uh, very generous contributions help support uh, all of those programs, and we're real grateful for that. Absolutely. So any additional comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank Thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> Last resolution is Resolution 22B. Dash 2023, a resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety regarding street closings for the Firecracker 10K. <clears throat> Whereas there's been a request filed by Nicholas Schaefer on behalf of the Madison Area Run Club for a street closing in connection with the Firecracker 10K to be held on Saturday, July the 2nd, 2023. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the following streets shall be closed from 7.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturday, July 1st, 2023. Wilson Avenue between Cub Trail and Lanier Drive, Lanier Drive between Wilson Avenue and the Madison State Hospital entrance, Hanging Rock Hill between Madison State Hospital entrance and 3rd Street, 3rd Street between Craigmont Street and Broadway Street, and Broadway Street between 3rd Street and 5th Street. <coughs> Being further resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that said streets as close shall be under the supervision and control of the Madison Area Run Club at the times noted above for the year 2023. Welcome, Nicholas. Uh, tell us a little bit about last year's 10K. It looked like it was phenomenal success with the change in the course. Yeah, last year. So this is our third year, the Ryan Club's third year putting on the race. Last year we changed uh, to the finish line to Gaines Park, right there on Broadway Street. Um, we had the fire trucks there with the flag. It's a huge success. So uh, people really enjoyed that downhill there at the very end. So Downhill at the end versus uphill yeah. is yeah, always yeah, better. Yeah. So, it turned out really well. We're gonna we're gonna keep the same course for this year. Hopefully, get the fire trucks back there with the flag and uh, really make it a great Fourth of July event. Well, thank you and all the members of the Madison Area Run Club for taking this on as it was you know transitioning away from the Madison Courier, and it's a great event to uh, have as part of the festivities for the Regatta Week and great great course change too and. Uh, I'll just mention, too, that we're working with NDOT 
uh, to reopen Hanging Rock Hill for pedestrians for the course that morning since there's a, a, a probability that it'll still be closed because of the slide repair work that they're doing. So, but we don't anticipate any interruption. And I'll continue to uh, communicate with you guys and end on, on, on that matter, okay? Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Board, any other comments or questions? Uh, we do have an event plan that's been filed. Shared a copy of that with you all this morning. Yeah. Same as last year. And uh, it went really well last year, smoothly. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve <laughs> resolution number 22B-2023. Any comments or questions? Anyone from? Chief, your mind coming to the podium will capture your uh, your handsome face uh, for all to see <laughs> and your comments. Uh, just one comment when you. You stated earlier that we had an outstanding runner in the group. I was anticipating my name, <laughs> and uh, secondly, I just wanted to point out that they, they really did a good job, and the, and the course change really helped the police department. And, and well, I'm glad to hear that you're such a running advocate, and I would love nothing more than to run this year's 10K with you. <laughs> Uh, July the second. <laughs> we can carry we can carry each other across yes. that finish line. <laughs> yeah. And I would one thing before I leave, I would like to point out, uh, Nick. I think it would be inappropriate if we didn't display those socks that you wore down here today. Those are pretty good. Yeah. What? Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> no, they did a great job. We appreciate it. Hey, whenever you're going to talk in front of the public, you got to wear your lucky socks. Well, here we go. Yes. I, I think I think Wallace was on the Gator. Uh, for the 10K last year, so it be pretty easy for you, Mayor. Uh, well, uh, still out there. The offer's still valid there, Chief. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Are you none? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thanks, Thank Nicholas. You. Appreciate Thank it. You. And moving on, I'll invite uh, Nicole and her team up to give us a blight update. behind me do all the talking on this segment. All the talking. All the talking. <laughs> all the talking. Clear about that. Do landing. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, actually. There's been a lot of talk about running. I heard something about golf. I'll, I'll go there, not, not the running stuff. But Speed um, golf. We're, we're going to invent speed golf next as a new event. We could do that? Yes. Absolutely. Sign me up. We have a very uh, brief, uh, broad update for you today on the the neglected and unsafe uh, work that we've been doing. Uh, the beginning of the year, we had roughly 116 structures that we had identified. Um, to date, 19 of those have been invaded, uh, primarily owner. Uh, but we do have some, um, as you see there, we had seven, we've had seven demos over the last six months. <clears throat> uh, 13 of the properties, uh, the notice of violations have gone unanswered. We will be seeking another inspection warrant on one of those properties. Um, eight of them, we are in the process of seeking a meeting with the owner still. Uh, Nicole will talk a couple of uh, PACE applications, I think, today, but seven of those uh, of the 116 do have PACE, are in the PACE application process. Great. And then the remaining, we're just working through um, the neglected, unsafe process to see where we're at. That's a large universe of properties to deal with, and you know, I wish we had a greater percentage of uh, owner collaboration. I mean, I'm very happy with the, with the level that we do, because yep. that's what makes the difference when you get the owner in, engaged in creating a plan. Uh, there's too many on that list that don't have plans and don't have uh, the collaboration that we need, but we have to keep prioritizing and dealing with the worst of the worst. Appreciate all the work you guys have done uh, in that regard. And that combined with our PACE program has made a big difference in, you know, moving dilapidated uh, abandoned properties off of that list that's now, you know, getting completely rehabbed with uh, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of new investment. And it's evident as you drive around town, you'll see some of those formerly abandoned structures now being, now being worked on. 
yeah. and then the worst of the worst that are unsafe uh, with no plan from the owner. Um, sometimes you have to demolish the, the ones that are not going to be maintained. Agreed. And I believe those were all voluntary demolitions. Is that correct? Pretty sure, yes. yeah. Well, thank you for that. And uh, Landon, do you have any remarks you'd like to share with us? Uh, good afternoon. No, I don't have any remarks, but thank you. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I'll make a remark about not having remarks. <laughs> well, I want to recognize Landon. And is this your last week with us, Landon? Yes, sir. Uh, I want to recognize the work that Landon has done really leading us through uh, an extremely important initiative. And that is uh, helping us identify the, how significant the universe of unsafe properties is in, in the city of Madison. And if you could see the pictures and images of some of these properties, it's shocking that they've been allowed to deteriorate for decades without any intervention. And uh, now we're trying to intervene so that they could be saved. And um, working with Dewey and Nicole, Lanny, you've made a big uh, big difference in our progress toward that so good luck in your next next endeavor thank you it's been a pleasure doing it you're welcome thank you good job thank you. uh anything else nicole on blight elimination update okay we'll move on to pace finals Carla Vossler completed the pace work on uh, the uh, foundation of this home. Uh, you can kind of see in the lower photo uh, the bracing along one of the walls was failing, um, as well as some of her floor joists. Uh, she was able to work with a contractor to secure that foundation uh, so it doesn't cause uh, future damage to the rest of the building. Uh, it was all completed according to her pace grant agreement. And she's asking for the full disbursement of seven thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah, let's do all three at once if we can. The next one is four twenty-seven Mulberry Street. Uh, Michael and Starla uh, Rowley uh, completed uh, the uh, work of replacing uh, nineteen of their windows that were failing. Um, all sides of this home. Uh, they've done a great job. They even went back to the original uh, historic uh, grid pattern on the front. Um, and all of that was completed according to their PACE agreement. And they're asking for the full disbursement of $7,500. And the last final I have is. Uh, J Rock Properties, uh, 223 West First Street, uh, completed the restoration and replacement of uh, siding uh, on the front. They did uh, wood siding and then LP Smart siding on the sides and rear. Uh, they were able to complete that according to their PACE grant and are asking for the full disbursement of $7,500. Wow, that went fast. Well, uh, along with the improvements that they made on that uh, property, which is, it looks like it's brand new, the, the new sidewalk in front of it, which addressed up the neighborhood. The city uh, did sidewalks on the entire block, and we're working on drainage there all across downtown right now. But uh, that's what we get is that partnership with what the city can do and attract also additional investment by private property owners that have a plan to rehabilitate a property that, again, was just sitting there deteriorating. And sometimes that significant investment is foundational. It's happening on the inside or underneath that uh, doesn't give you the curb appeal we're looking for in some instances, but it does save the structure from significant deterioration. I make a motion we approve the uh, PACE finals at 611 East 2nd, 427 Mulberry, 223 West 1st. I'll second Carl's motion, and I just want to say to Nicole that 611 East 2nd Street, that looked like a pretty extensive project it, going through the, looking through the paperwork. Yeah, it, it originally was slated to be much worse, 
uh, but she was able to work with a local engineer uh, that um, helped her understand the difference between what the contractor had quoted and what actually needs done. Um, so she was able to readjust and get uh, the work that really would save the building because the original one, she probably still would have had to use. <coughs> Looked like it was very time consuming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's been working every, every day. Uh, trying. <laughs> she'd call me about every couple of months, hey, I'm still on track, just let you know, don't let my pace expire. <laughs> it was good. Uh, it's just great to see all the uh, investment <laughs> happening in our neighborhoods. Yes. Any additional comments or questions? We have a motion and a second. On fair, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. And we have another round of PACE coming up May yes, 9th. Yes, the PACE committee uh, meets next Tuesday uh, to review applications, so you'll see applications for the latest round on your next agenda. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Under Mayor's comments, not a whole lot this week. Um, just a reminder as we go through the coordination of the event plans, because we're already seeing literally dozens of requests <coughs> for street closures and or park closures. Uh, so the event planning work that we did last year is now all online through OpenGov, and people can apply for um, the, uh, the street closure as well as the uh, uh, park uh, park closures and file their event plan they can file their event plan online but give us all the descriptions that they need for the event I think that's working well we have a tremendous amount of work going on right now with NDOT we, we talked a little bit about the um, the Ferry Street drainage project but there's a tremendous amount of NDOT work happening on the hilltop uh, highway 62 intersections at Michigan intersections at Frank's Drive and then, of course, uh, the multi-million dollar slide repair project that's happening now on Hanging Rock Hill. We also talked about all the city, county, and state work that's happening. Sometimes it's overlapping. So we'll do the best we can to make sure we're communicating to the public and just ask for their patience because there's a lot of much-needed infrastructure work, some of which timing-wise we can control, some we can't, all of which has deadlines on it, uh, particularly strings attached to how the money is appropriated uh, for either a bridge bridge or street work or something NDOT is doing. But as you drive around town, there's this tremendous amount of investment happening everywhere, and it's just going to create a little bit of inconvenience for a while, but I promise you it's going to be beautiful and uh, necessary when it's all finished. I will uh, ask the board if they have anything to add, and then we'll, we'll open up to public comment. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody here would like to address the Board of Public Works and Safety, please come to the podium and identify your name and address. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jan Vatrus at 701 East 2nd Street. And I just had a question on the blight elimination, even though everybody's left. Um, I believe they mentioned that there have been seven uh, structures demolished the first six or the last six months. Could we get a total number of demolitions in the historic district? Not today, obviously. Sure. But, yeah, they keep track but, of that. Well, it's not been made public. Um, so if, if we could have that at the next meeting, that would be great. Be happy to. And they've okay. all been voluntary. No, so, yeah. It's yeah. just for comparing that to the structures report for the National Historic Landmark District. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah, we'll get that for you, Jan. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Chief. I'll be brief. Uh, I'd just like to bring this uh, to your attention, and I will present it at the uh, next board meeting, but we'll give the public uh, a chance to make any kind of comments should there, should there be any. Doug Helton, owner of uh, Madison Ironworks, has requested a uh, loading-unloading zone uh, just to the east of his uh, property. There's two parking spaces there that... Uh, that I think would work very well. He, uh, you know, has a lot of uh, loading and unloading during his business hours, and sometimes those are taken, which makes it very difficult to, for semis to uh, to park there, which creates traffic issues. Uh, so I spoke to the mayor this morning. We're going to try to come up with some kind of plan for him. Uh, you know, maybe put a time frame on that, but it would be Monday through Friday. Uh, you know, maybe between like eight business hours, eight to four, nine to five, something along those lines. But anybody living in that area, if they have any concerns or comments, please let me know. 
the only place east of that is the church. I spoke with the pastor and his wife, and they have no issues with that. So I'll uh, come forward at the next board meeting and with a uh, with a final plan on that. So just wanted to give you a heads up and in the public as well. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Anybody else? Here now, our next meeting will be Monday, May 15th. I'll just uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. We adjourn. I'll second that motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for being here.